It's a fact of life. Assets used in business break down, wear out, or become obsolete over time. That's one of the reasons we depreciate business assets, both for accounting and tax purposes. This video is the first in a series of videos on depreciation, with a focus on the IRS method of calculating and claiming depreciation, the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, or MAKERS. I'm the Tax Geek, and here is MAKERS Oversimplified. <music> Now I've covered depreciation on this channel in an earlier video, but that video concentrated on depreciation of rental property. This series will present depreciation as it applies to all sorts of assets used for the production of income. So before we go into detail on makers, let's ask the question, why do we depreciate assets? It's not simply that business assets wear out over time. Depreciation is a key part of the matching principle, which is a generally accepted accounting principle that states that business income be as closely matched with associated expenses as possible. So if you purchased an asset for your business with a useful life of five years and deducted the cost of it from your income as an expense in the year it was purchased, your business's net income would be substantially understated in the year you purchased the asset and significantly overstated in the other four years. This is not a realistic depiction of net income. Depreciation really has nothing to do with the fair market value of the asset. Instead, depreciation reflects a loss of usefulness over time. It is not unusual to depreciate an asset that increases in value, such as a building. It is also not unusual for an asset to have value and continue being used for some time after its cost has been recovered by depreciation. One asset that rarely loses usefulness is land, so land is never subject to depreciation. Of course, the simplest way to recover the cost of an asset is evenly throughout the asset's predicted life, and this method is called the straight line method. But accountants generally agree that most assets depreciate faster in their first few years of ownership and, as such, have devised a number of additional depreciation methods to account for this phenomenon. The depreciation methods accountants use to prepare financial statements don't need to, and usually don't, match the depreciation method used for tax purposes. The IRS groups all its allowable depreciation methods under one umbrella called MAKERS, which, as I said earlier, stands for Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. MAKERS eliminates most guesswork involved in calculating and reporting depreciation for tax purposes by establishing standardized recovery periods and depreciation methods. To calculate depreciation under MAKERS, you look up the asset's recovery period in one table, look up the appropriate depreciation percentage in another table, and multiply that percentage by the adjusted basis of the asset. Recovery periods can be found in one of two tables. Table B1 organizes assets by general type, and Table B2 by industry. The recovery period you'll most often use is in column 2 of the table under GDS, or General Depreciation System. In column 1, you'll find the asset life for accounting purposes, and column 3 shows the recovery period under ADS, or the Alternative Depreciation System. In this video, we're going to focus entirely on the GDS and save the ADS for another video. Most of the time, for property that is not real property, Table A1 is used to find the annual depreciation percentage. Except for real property, we usually assume that business assets are acquired halfway through a given year. So that means we depreciate assets for one more year than the listed recovery period. So, for an asset with a recovery period of five years, we take one half year's depreciation in the first year, followed by four full years of depreciation, and then finally one half year's depreciation to fully recover the cost. The A1 depreciation table takes these half years into account. Let's put all this together and see how it works. Alice and Ralph have a bakery, and in April of 2021, they purchased a new oven for $4,369, including installation. Consulting the recovery life table, they see that a useful life of equipment used in food manufacturing is 12 years, but Maker's GDS allows a recovery period of 7 years. Then they consult depreciation table A1 and see that for the first year, they can take 14.29% of the oven's $4,369 basis, or $624 as a depreciation expense. 
In 2022, they would be able to take 24.49% of the basis, or $1,069 as a depreciation expense. Let's see how this is reported on their tax return. Ordinary depreciation is reported on Form 4562 Part 3. Here is Alice and Ralph's Form 4562 for 2021, showing the first year's depreciation for the oven. If, say, they had also purchased a mixer, also with a recovery period of seven years, for $2,750, they would have added the depreciation for both items together on the same line. If they had also purchased a display counter, which has a recovery period of five years, the depreciation for that item is listed separately. Then all the figures are totaled. So let's fast forward to 2022. In 2022, they had depreciation for all the assets they purchased in 2021. The total of this depreciation is reported on line 17 of part 3. In 2022, Alice and Ralph purchased a commercial refrigerator at a cost of $5,225. The first year depreciation for the refrigerator is listed here, and all the depreciation is totaled. Since Alice and Ralph have a partnership, their total depreciation is entered on line 16 of their form 1065. Depreciation can also be entered on line 13 of Schedule C, on line 18 of Schedule E, line 14 of Schedule F, and line 14 of Form 1120S. There are other places where depreciation can be entered on a tax return, but these forms are the most common for small business people. You can now see it is very important to keep careful track of any depreciation you take. This is done using a depreciation worksheet which is not sent with your tax return, but instead kept with your records. If you use a computer to prepare your taxes, the software will automatically prepare a worksheet for you. And if you use a paid preparer, he or she should provide you with one. If you decide to change software or paid preparer, it is essential to have this worksheet so the new software or preparer can properly calculate your depreciation for subsequent years. These are the very basics of depreciation, and you'll notice we skipped parts 1 and 2 of Form 4562. In the next video in this series, we'll look at ways to write off the entire cost of an asset in the first year of ownership, the Section 179 deduction, bonus depreciation, and the de minimis election. In the meantime, you will find additional information and resources in the video description. If you found this video informative, giving it a thumbs up makes YouTube look favorably upon the video and show it to others. And if you'd like to keep getting smarter about your taxes, please subscribe. Of course, your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.